Hi everybody! Today on Bella Renovare we are going to be repainting a dresser that I have painted now multiple times. My daughter has decided she wants to change her style and so the dresser behind me, mm, we're going to change it. So stay tuned if you guys want to see how to strip down a piece of furniture, how to repaint it, and how to make it lighter. Okay, <laughs> so if you guys know me, you know that I'm really into color. And I did this furniture piece for her. You can see it all the way. So I did this furniture piece for her a few months ago. Now, the story behind this dresser is that my daughter loves this dresser, but every time that she goes through a change, she wants it changed. So I have painted this dresser, let's see, one, two, three, three times. I've painted this dresser three times. So this will be the fourth time that I've changed, fourth time that I've painted it. Okay, so why do I keep repainting it? Well, it's what I do, my daughter likes it, and it gives me a project to do. So I'm a little bit heartbroken right now because I do really love this dresser, but it's her room, she just turned eight. She wants to redo her room in this kind of neutral boho look. And so what we're gonna do here, and you're gonna learn a few things in this video, is I'm actually going to, because you can only put so many layers of paint on a piece of furniture before you really need to just strip it off. So we're at four, that's a little bit ridiculous. We need to strip it down. So I'm gonna show you how to strip paint off of this, and then we're going to repaint it like it has never been painted before, and it's going to be lighter. So when I said my heart is broken, it's because my daughter wants this to be in lighter shades like white with a little bit of a blush pink. I can dig it, okay, whatever, we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it some neutral boho. At least she's trying to do neutral boho. We got this bedding set for her, if you can see it, it's kind of a blush pink. She's going for more of a plants and succulents and all that wood and whatever. Okay, so I don't normally paint white, but in this video, we're gonna go over one, how to strip a piece of furniture down. So if you guys are finding furniture that already has a ton of paint on it, this is gonna be helpful for you to learn how to strip it down. Two, we're gonna go over how to make sure that we don't have bleed through because this will have bleed through if we don't block it. So we're gonna block it. And three, we're gonna go over painting it a lighter color. And four, we're gonna do a little bit of like a ombre type blend, okay? So you'll learn a lot of stuff in this video. Stick with me. I know I'm talking a little bit more than I normally do. If you guys are just here and you're new here, again, my name's Kristana. I'm a furniture artist. I do a lot of crazy stuff. This piece is going to be totally out of my comfort zone. I am not into neutrals at all. And so now that my daughter wants to do it, uh, stab me in the heart, it's okay. So rejoice all my neutral lovers, this is for you. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I do. Also, there's a little, um, underneath the description, it'll be a little arrow and it says see more. Click on that, it'll pull down the description and it'll have everything that I'm using. You can click on the links and it'll take you right where you need to be to purchase it. And as always, guys, let's get started. I'm gonna have to pull all her clothes out. We're gonna have to pull this downstairs and we're gonna start stripping this down. Now, before I start stripping this down, I do wanna let you know, I live in Germany. So I'm from the States, I live in Germany right now. So I will be using a German stripper. So if you're not here in Germany, you're not gonna be able to get it. One of my favorite strippers was Jasco, but I know that in the US they've changed a lot of stuff. So really what we're gonna focus on is I can't tell you a specific stripper right at this moment because I haven't been in the States for a year and a half. And so I think we're going to focus on stripping it down. What I like to do when I strip it is I strip it down and then I sand. So even if we're not using the greatest stripper in the world, we're gonna sand it as well. And that's gonna get us to where we need to be. So just disclaimer, if I was in the States or something like that, I could give you a better brand, but I'm not. So. Basically, you're gonna just use a good chemical stripper. We can ask around, see what people think. In the comments, if you guys have a favorite chemical stripper, go ahead and put it down there for my friends. Um, if you're not located in the US, you're not located in Germany, maybe you're in Australia or something, go ahead and, and or in the UK or in Brazil or whatever, 
in the comments, put down in your area what your favorite chemical stripper is. You don't have to do a chemical stripper, but we will be doing that today because it's gonna make my life a lot easier. It will make your life a lot easier when you're trying to get chalk type paint off of furniture. So enough jibber, jabber, jibber, jabber, jibber, jabber. Let's get started. Okay, so before we move on, what I did is this, my daughter is actively using this dresser. So what I did is I poured all her clothes on her bed, <laughs> hoping that I could strip this down at least today. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I pulled all the drawers out, you can see, and I'm going to strip them individually and then I'll have my husband help me bring the shell downstairs and we'll strip that. But I had someone ask me this question, why don't you just sand it all down? I could, but it would take me a lot more time to sand everything down instead of just putting the stripper on it and allowing the stripper to take most of the paint off and then sanding it. So that's what we're gonna do is I'm going to obviously remove the hardware, save her little unicorn things, maybe put in a keepsake box, keepsake box, <laughs> um, because these are really special. I, I mean, maybe they're special to me, I don't know. But So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to strip down all of these drawers first. We're gonna go over that. We'll sand them down and then we'll do the body. So that's what we'll do next is we're going to strip down this furniture. So this is my German stripper. What I do is I pour it into a plastic container and then I use a cheap chip brush to brush it on top of the paint. I use not a lot, but I like to put enough on there that it's gonna really soak in. And make sure that you're wearing gloves and protective gear because you don't wanna get this on your skin. Once I'm done putting a layer of stripper on top of it, I actually take cling wrap or plastic wrap and I put it over top of the area that I have put the stripper on. It just kind of locks it all in, especially if you're outside or there's the wind is blowing, which I was outside. It keeps the moisture in and it just kind of locks in that stripper so that way it works a little bit better. I waited about 20 minutes and allowed the stripper to sit. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna pull back the plastic wrap a little bit out of time. That way the other part is still covered so that it doesn't dry it up while I'm pull using, a using a plastic scraper to scrape off the paint. I also like to use a wire brush to go into any areas that are recessed to get the paint out of there as well. Okay, so I have stripped down this layer. Like I said before, there is three layers of paint on here. And I know how many layers of paint are on here because I actually painted it. When you pick up a piece that's got paint on it, you're not really sure always how many layers or even what kind of paint's on there. So sometimes you're gonna have to do this process a few times before you get really down to the wood. This is one way you can actually tell that your stripper's working. If you look at it and it looks wrinkly, that is telling you that it's starting to work. I started stripping this with one of the Dixie Mud spatulas. Don't do that. I finally found this one. This is one of my favorite plastic spatulas. It's actually got a scoop on it. It's in the description below, but it's one of my favorite, favorite things to use for stripping. So here we are on the next layer. I'm just gonna continue this until I feel like there is enough wood showing that when I sand, it doesn't gum up all my paper. That's one of the reasons why I actually didn't sand it in the first place is because it would just burn through too many things of sandpaper and I didn't wanna waste it. And if you don't allow enough of it to come off with the wood, it could gum up your paper. So I'm just gonna continue this process and get as much off as I possibly can. 
After I've pulled enough paint off to where I want to start sanding, I actually clean the piece with mineral spirits and steel wool. So what I'll do is I'll actually dip the steel wool, a fine steel wool into mineral spirits and kind of go over it. That way I can get all the residue off and it helps neutralize the stripper as well before you start sanding. All right, friends. So it may have taken a little bit. It took us three layers of stripper. The thing about this dresser is that I know how many layers of paint are on it because when I got it, it was wood. So I knew what to look for. Whereas you may not know what to look for. So what I try to do is I try to take off as much paint as I possibly can before I go in with my steel wool or before I sand it. Could you sand this whole thing down? Yeah, you absolutely could. But for me, I, I know it's a time consuming process, but what do they say? If anything is worth doing, it's worth doing right. So I wanted to make sure that I do it right because this is the last time I'm painting this dresser. I'm not painting this dresser again. I don't care. So we're gonna do it right the first time or do it right this time, the fourth time. <laughs> I have stripped this down. There is a little bit of paint still left in here. Once the wood fully dries from stripping it and cleaning it off with the mineral spirits. I'm gonna go ahead with a dry steel wool and I'm going to go into these crevices again. We're gonna paint this so it's not really that big of a deal if there's a little pieces of paint left. I wanted to get as much off as I can so that way we have the best surface we can for a perfect boho, clean, white-ish pink finish. So the next step for me will be to strip all the rest of these down. I'm not gonna take you through the process. Again, you guys saw what I did on this one and we're gonna let this sit. I brought it back inside. Now for the stripper, it probably would have, it's colder here, it's going into fall in Germany. And so if it was a little bit warmer outside, it probably would have penetrated the, the paint a little bit further. Or because I'm in Germany, there's different rules and regulations as far as what you can put in the stripper. So wherever you're at, you may have one that's a little bit stronger. Again, in the comments below, why don't you put your favorite so that way we can share. Also put where you're at, that way if you're in Australia and you have a favorite one and you can't get it in the States or in Europe or something like that. I really like the one that I use. I think it works really well. I don't do a lot of stripping right now, but it works really well for what I need it for. So. Again, we're going to go ahead and strip down all the rest of these and then I will work on the body. So that's my next step is to just strip down this entire piece. So I may show you little clips of it, but again, I walked you through exactly what to do with the store. You're gonna do the same exact thing on the entire piece. So we're gonna be changing this piece quite a bit. I'm gonna remove this molding. Anytime that there are little appliques or whatever you wanna call them on the piece, you can go underneath it with a flathead screwdriver, kind of pop it in there with a hammer, and then there should only be nails, possibly glue, but with older pieces, it should pop right up. I'm gonna hammer in the nails cover those with some filler. And then obviously you wanna sand over that spot because maybe there's you know inconsistencies with paint or whatever. We also decided to take the bottom trim off. My daughter decided that she wanted that off. I thought it would look better because that little scallop is not quite modern. So you can also pull these off. They're usually just nailed in. Used a flute. I used a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and just slowly pulled it out where the nails would be. My next step will be to fill the hardware holes because we're gonna change the hardware. And I'm also going to fill in those little recessed areas that you see on the bottom too. When I am filling hardware holes or doing something like this, I always do thin layers and go back and repeat the process. So it may take me a little bit longer, but it gives me a better result. So what I'm doing is I'm filling these in, I'm going to sand over it, then I'm going to assess if it needs more, fill it in, sand over it, repeat the process. I wanna tell you something really important about this Dixie Mud. 
You want to wipe off your spatula after you're done using it with a paper towel or a rag. Do not rinse it down your sink. Once my mud is fully dry, I take my surf prep sander. You can use whatever you want. You could do it by hand, whatever orbital sander you have. And I use a fine grit sandpaper and I just go over the area so that I can get the excess off and assess if I need another layer, which I did. So I did about two layers of this before I was happy. So this video is kind of gonna be like inception <laughs> inspiration video. What I mean by that is, I created a video a while ago on how to do ombre and ombre only using two colors. And then my good friend, Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed, check her out right here. She did this video right here and it was inspired by me. But the video that I did when I did ombre was blues, whereas she was painting a desk for her daughter and she was doing pinks. I feel like maybe her daughter and my daughter colluded and they decided that they wanted us to repaint their stuff in these blush pink colors. So my daughter came to me and she said, mommy, I don't want my bright colors anymore. I want a neutral boho. And I said, okay. Now, what I decided to do is Christina used, I wanna say she used soft pink and tea rose. For this one, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and use tea rose and drop cloth. What I'm gonna do on this piece is I'm gonna be using two lighter colors. I'm going to probably go from the bottom and do tea rose and then work my way up to drop cloth. But we're gonna mix this, the middle color or we're gonna mix these two colors for our middle color. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But because I'm doing lighter colors, I'm gonna have to block this piece because I know that it's gonna have tannins and bleed throughs. I will be using Dixie Belle's Boss and I'm gonna be using the white. The reason why I'm gonna be using the white is because it's almost gonna serve as a base coat as well for these two colors. Although the coverage is really good with these colors and I probably only need two coats even though they're lighter, it's just gonna brighten up these colors a little bit more, give me a peace of mind knowing that I'm not gonna have tannins and I'm gonna have a good base coat underneath. So that is the first step in this process with my inception video of being <laughs> inspired. Christina's inspired by me and then I was inspired by her. So like it goes tenfold. It's really great to have this community, but that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Dixie Belle's Boss in white next. We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. If we are crashing down again. Pieces of love, it's all right. Scattered in mud, it's all right. You're giving me a lie again. And tell me what you want this time. I won't take it to the heart, cause I know we won't make it. I've put two coats of boss on here, and I did tape off some of the wooden trim because I want to mix the wood with the paint. So the next step is going to be blending. When you're doing an ombre with only two colors, what you're doing here is it's allowing the transition to be a little bit easier when you are mixing a third color with the two other colors. So the bottom will be tea rose, and then I'm gonna do a mix of tea rose and drop cloth, and then the top will be drop cloth. So what you wanna do for your middle color is just do a one for one mix of the other two colors that you've chosen. Once I've mixed my middle color, I'm going to actually place a base coat of all three colors on my piece. So right now what I'm doing is I'm placing a base coat and I'm marking exactly where I want all the colors to be. That way I know where all my blend lines are gonna be. So again, I am starting from the bottom and working my way up to the top. The bottom will be tea rose. Then the color above that will be the mix of tea rose and drop cloth. And then the top will be drop cloth. Okay, so now we're gonna start blending. What you're gonna need is a paper towel, a mister bottle, you're gonna need a clean, dry, neutral brush, and then you're gonna want your paint brushes for each color. What we're gonna do is you want to make sure that that transition line, which I know is very faint right here and the colors are very similar, you wanna make sure there's wet paint on the T-Rose side and you also wanna make sure that there's wet paint on the side that has the mix. So 
on the bottom your tea rose and then right above that you're going to do your mix color then what you're going to do is you're going to mist it and you're going to kind of just do circles and pull down your color that goes into tea rose and then you can swap and you can actually take your tea rose brush and go up into that other color so what i'm doing here is i'm taking my tea rose and i'm going from the bottom and working my way up into that mixed color now what i'm going to do is i'm going to mist it again and i'm going to take my neutral brush and i'm going to start at the above the transition line and i'm just going to go horizontal and vertical and i'm going to do diagonal so that way i can blend this together better next we're going to work on the colors above so we're going to do the drop cloth and we're going to do the mixed of the tea rose and drop cloth so we're doing the same exact thing at that transition line you want to make sure there's wet paint so we're going to put wet paint down on each color before we actually start mixing once i've put wet paint down at each transition line i'm actually going to take that brush that is from the mixed color and i'm going to start from the bottom start into that color and i'm going to work my way up into the drop cloth i'm going to do circles i'm going to go horizontal and then i'm going to actually take my drop cloth after i've done all the different directions i'm going to take my drop cloth brush after i missed it and i'm going to do the same exact thing i'm going to go down into that color i'm going to do vertical go horizontal then i'm going to mist it and then i'm going to take my neutral brush and do the same exact thing i did down below right here I'm just moving to the front of the piece and I'm doing the same exact thing I did on the side on the front of the piece as well Once the paint's dry and I let it sit for a few hours, I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to seal it with Dixie Belle's Satin Clear Coat. I just use one of my synthetic paint brushes to do this and I just put it on like I'm doing paint and I'm very careful to make sure that there's no drips or globs so it's nice and even and thin coats. My next step is to use Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in White. What I like to do is put this over raw wood. So what I'll do is I'll actually brush it on with my wax brush and then I wipe it back with a shop towel and it gives it a weathered wood look while you can still see the wood grain. And I thought that this would all kind of tie into this piece, making it more of a boho look because boho is a mixture of wood and color and patterns and texture. And this is just a neutral boho look. So it's a mixture of some wood and some color. And so I thought that it would really tie it all in together. I also kept the legs neutral, the feet neutral. So my surf prep sander is really great for getting curves and getting into those crevices. So I was able to strip everything down off of it. So that way I could do my kind of weathered wash with the white wax. So I did the same thing on the feet as well.
The last step is to add the hardware. I'm on the top, I'm going to use gold with some pearl inlays on there in the center. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna use gold bar hardware. Okay guys, so this piece is done. I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are a beginner, don't fear, just go for it. You only need two colors. For those of you who are perfecting your blending, I hope this helps you. Again, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you get all the latest videos. Everything I use will be in the description below. Don't forget to go check out my girlfriend, Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed. She just did a really, really cute desk for her daughter. Also, she's super talented, so go check her out. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy creating, and I'll see you next time. We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. If we are crashing down again. Pieces of love, it's all right. Scattered in mud, it's all right. You're giving me a lie again. And tell me what you